So in this video, I will show you the process on Akiba, which is an Australian Shepherd and these are my favorite breeds. I absolutely love them. They look so cute and they have such a nice character. But I will uh, work in pastel as usual, so I will use my uh, Clairford Zemper Summit, which is my favorite paper. It can get so many layers and you can work really realistic with it. Absolutely my favorite. I got two pets with uh, eight different colors in total, which makes it quite a difficult choice to um, yeah, choose a paper. So what I've noticed is that the dark colors such as wine and dark blue can get less layers so it's harder to achieve that realistic result and the lighter layers such as light blue and sand can get a lot of layers I've only used blue pads so far so I don't know how it is with the other colors but I'll try it soon probably so I mostly use like the darker colors for my wildlife art and the lighter colors for my commissions because they really have to be good. And so now I will make a choice here uh, in the corner you can see the reference photo I am using for Kiba so you can so I can kind of explain my way of choosing paper and you can see why. So this color would look very good because they have like the same color but I'm scared that if I use this color Kiba won't pop out as it should. This is a brown which will also look good because like they have the same colors in common. Here these are my leftovers so if I make a smaller piece I just cut up cut off some paper and I use it for future projects. But here's like my full block, so you got the sand color which I use in almost all my pet portraits. And the light blue which will also look good but it might be not the right color for this uh, portrait because we have a lot of white and keep on going pop out. So you see the fur, the white fur has a lot of blue tones in it and it will be too flat to use the same color in both the paper and the drawing. So these are a lot warmer colors which would really fit well with Kipa because like his um, brown in his face will go really well with like the warmer colors and then the white uh, and the cold tones in his fur will balance it a bit out. So at the end I choose the brown one because you no know, like his fur the dark of his fur has like this type of brown in it so it will really balance each other out and i think like the white on top of the darker surface will really make kiba stand out and then i will like transfer the sketch onto the paper which I will do using a grid. So here you can see the photo I am using. I added a grid in it so you can see 10 squares on the height and 7 on the other side. And now I will transfer that grid onto my paper, but first I will use a color to make the grid in. I really I don't want the grid to be in a light, in a very light color if I use dark paper because I like it when they are the same color because I have to see the grid but not so good and if I don't do a background you will see the grid very much and it will be difficult to erase if you lose if you use a really white color so that's why I like to use the same so now I'm basically drawing the grid oops sorry for my hat <laughs> I'm not used to drawing and filming at the same time so it's still a bit figuring out how to hold my hat, how to hold my hands, where to put my camera. So I just speeded it a bit up because otherwise it would be too boring to watch. But halfway through my camera, my battery died so grid is completed right now. 
and now we will start to transfer the sketch into the paper which I also sped up a little bit because I've spent a lot of time on doing it but I think it is important because you really want to get all the proportions right so this is a very important stage if you make a big mistake here your whole drawing will look like weird and like not realistic so this is an important stage to spend time on and I love that using a grid really can speed that up because otherwise it would take me like a lot of hours to complete it and now it will go a little bit faster what I'm basically doing is like like watching on paper and then uh, watching on the drawing and see what part is in which square and then add it to the paper you can't see the lines really good of the grid but that's my intention um, so now it will be easier to erase them afterwards so like, this is a tricky part because you got the ear is like the wind is blowing in a bit but it is also very colorful very warm colors like the orange tones and the yellow tones of the sun coming through and i'm not sure what i will do with it yet i'm drawing whether i will copy those colors or whether i will change it and adjust it a little bit myself So when I'm drawing the sketch, I I really make sure that I draw everything all right, and where there are a lot of light, like hairs blowing, and I don't use solid lines everywhere. I just sometimes draw the hairs because it makes it look better. So now it's nose. That's like part I'm really struggling with most of the time. Like diagnosis are really difficult to get right. Like I always give them the wrong shape. And as this part is the most central in the drawing, the attention will get to it a lot, so it has to be good. Oops, my camera fell off again, so I will run out of storage and I didn't notice it while drawing, so here's the finished sketch. I will now color the eyes. So in the corner on the bottom you can see the reference I'm using, and what I like to do first is go in with a black pencil and just um, like go over the um, edges so that I really can't go out with my eyes because I usually make mistakes to make my eyes too big so what I do right now is just like map out the outlines and just don't go over there I will just very carefully um, make sure I get them in the right shape because Eyes are so important in a drawing. I definitely should have had uh, sharped my pencil because the point isn't sharp at all and it makes it so much more difficult to get like the these thin outlines. So you see that on top of the eye there is um, a shadow. So I will also add that in the drawing and then I will color in the pupil I do this all uh, using black and but I will make sure when I get further into the drawing that it won't stay black. I will add other colors because like black in a lot of cases make your drawing look 
flat, but I will make sure it doesn't. So now I go over the edges which with some brown because in the reference photo it isn't pure black, it's more like a brownish color. Oops, and I was here creating a shadow with my arm, so I was picking up some colors. So, and this eye is was really challenging because you got like lots of colors into the eye. It's just not an eye in one color, but it has like multiple colors. So I started here on this um, blue piece, it was beautiful blue. And then I go into it with some white because as you can see on the reference, it is like really light blue, it's like a bright blue. So I really wanted to capture that because it gives the eyes so much uh, liveness. And then the pupil isn't just like a solid round, but it here bleeds into a bit in the eye, and the eye is also darker the closer you go to the pupil. In this case, not in every case, most of the time not. So I will do that as well. Oops, <laughs> touched my phone. I will now just look. I use a mix of dark browns dark greens and dark blues to make the part around the pupil. And I will just keep adding as you can see here, I added some um, dark blue in the eye as well to just not make it black only. And also there on that part, it isn't just like a solid line, it's like who stops the eyes here stops the eye and here starts the fur it's like more of the like it runs over into each other and so then i use some um yellowish tones some earth tones to make the brown in the eye i will always go in by the lightest colors yeah i've zoomed a bit in which is probably easier for you guys So I just keep using lots of brown colors, blues, some white. Some dark browns and some dark blues, better. I really like this dark blue because it's like uh, from Sablu and it isn't the best quality. I don't know whether it's my color or just like the whole color. Every pencil has it, but it's like really hard, so it's not very fossil-like, but I like it because it doesn't give off a lot of color, because like with normal colors you get just one stroke and it's like completely black and this doesn't work like that, so you can just you can add lots of blue, you can just add a stroke of blue and it will give like a little touch of the dark blue, but not completely, which I really like. I'm also using lots of a dark green because the eye has some green tones in it. And the eyes of a dog, of like everything, every animal and human as well, reflects the surroundings. So as an artist you often get to see what's the surrounding like. And so it's often like, um, oh my god, I say like too much, it really is annoying me, but I can't help. So I really do use a lot of the earthy tones, because that's most often what you see in the surroundings. So the half of the eye is um, 
there's a reflection of the surroundings which makes it hard because the, you have to show that the eye is dark but still get that reflection. So I'm using my um, blue, my light blue for it because it is a reflection of the sky which is blue and then I'm blending it out with my dark blue with my black so that it isn't just like too bright but you still get the reflection. So if you got any suggestions for me for videos you'd like me to post, um, subjects you like me to draw, particular um, things you like me to give some more information on, it can be um, my opinion on um, things about art or just like a tutorial like this, about the eyes, about the nose, um, it can be anything. I've got Probably, if everything goes right, I've got a tutorial on drawing white fur. Coming up, I will show you a little part of how I draw the fur of Kiba, which is a lot of white, but also other colors. He has a really colorful um, fur, which I absolutely love. I think Australian shepherds are such beautiful as dogs. But what I use about, uh, what I like about uh, puzzle pencils is that it's really a process of a uh, trail and error. You can draw something, you can adjust it, you can add another color. So that's basically what I'm doing. I am putting on a base color, then I'm going over with it another color, and then another, and I just always reflect through the drawing and see what other colors are like, and the form is like. And I just keep adding lighter colors, darker colors, till it is like the reference photo and till I like it. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm here drawing the little part on the eye. I don't know what the name is. What the name is. But I'm making sure it has some shadows as well because the um, light is going from a little bit both, so it will get some shadows. It's also always a great thing to try to figure out on your photo where the light is coming from. I on this photo it was easy because you saw the sun. I'm behind the dog, so it is really coming from behind a little bit both, but it can really help you to uh, see where your shadows will be, where your highlights will be, because it's not always very visible in the drawing. Sometimes you have to do some research yourself and like add some extra shadows, add some extra highlights to make the drawing look more alive. So you can see here, when my hand is gone, is that like the pupil, the pupil isn't good enough, so there really must be a better transition between both of them, but I will still do it. I'm just mapping out a bit what will happen. I'm now using, I'm starting with a white color because it is white in the photo. And then I will go over with some darker colors, um, most of the times around the edges, because with an, with an eye, the edges are most of the times darker than the inner side of it. So 
so I'm just using a lot of colors. I um, once saw a video where it said you couldn't use a lot of colors in your pastel drawings, but I think like you can never add enough. Like, um, oh, I'm saying like again, sorry guys. But in real life as well, there are so many things reflecting onto the subject, like the sun comes from above and it reflects on the grass and on the sky and on the buildings and everywhere and all these things come together onto your fur and gives it extra color so white is never white and black is never black it always has other colors from the surrounding coming in so there are so many colors in nature and so in your drawing as well I just like to use lots of colors which doesn't mean you can't make a good drawing with less colors I once saw someone who made a super realistic drawing only using five colors which is incredible but it takes much more skill I would love to learn it, but it would take so much time and so much skill. Oh, but basically, if you don't have a lot of colors, I got uh, three sets of pastel pencils. I got the Stabilo, a Fabricastle, and the Coinorm. But I started with one set of 12 pencils as well, so you can get results without them. But I would just, in this drawing, I would advise you to use um, light blue, white, dark brown, a light brown, um, a, a dark blue, um, and dark um, green. And that should be enough. As you can see here, I'm using a lot of different colors, but not so many pencils. So you don't really need a lot of colors, a lot of different pencils, but what you do need is um, colors you don't think of. Like when I first saw this drawing or if I would show it to someone who um, does not draw who doesn't have anything with art, they would just say, I'm seeing white and brown. But if I would show it to an artist, and then if you would look at it with the eye of an artist, you would see a lot of colors. Like, um, you would see um, yellow, um, blue, green, uh, uh, red. So, so many colors you don't think of. So that's basically what I mean when I say you need a lot of colors. You just have to, you don't need um, a hundred different colors in one drawing. You just need to think good about your colors. And if you pick the right colors, you won't need a lot. I most of the time use around 20 colors for each piece. And these I select. I start with um, picking all my colors, all the colors I think I would use, and at the end I um, got like 50 colors laying around my desk, but I only use 20, uh, 20 of them frequently, so I most of the time just hold them in my hand and pick colors from that, and I work like that. But as you can see, the art is, uh, the eye is making some process. Um, the most of the colors are in there. It's just um, on the bottom. Um, there will need the um, transition between the blue part and the brown part. Will need a bit. Will need a bit of work. The reflection will need a bit of work, and then the transition between the pupil and the iris. So I was like really struggling to get the reflection right. So what I basically did, I drew the uh, whole pupil um, black and then I added um, light blue on top of it 
and I just went over with the light blue and the dark blue and black very often so I did I added light blue but then it made it too light so I went over it with a dark blue and then again it was too dark so I went uh, over it again with light blue and I just continued doing that so it was the exact blue I wanted to get. So what I'm doing here is um, drawing the pupil. Um, what's important to remember is that the texture of the pupil and there will always be strokes from the outside of the pupil into the inside part. Uh, onto the pupil. Oh my god, I'm so messing this up. So, you got the pupil. Uh, the, no, not the pupil. The pupil is the inside. But you got the eye and then the lines will go from the outside of the eye into the inside where the pupil is. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> so always make sure when you're drawing beautiful that you kind of give it that look. It doesn't need to be exact like that because um, like you can see here in the photo you don't really see that. But I try to make my strokes everything a little bit into the inside of the eye. I'm also using some uh, rose to add in another color. It's just because the brown is um, more uh, um, to the red side, so I'm adding a bit of rose to get more of that specific brown. And also there you got the shadow, but part of the shadow is just over the eye. You got part of the shadow where the fur is coming further than the eyes. So you got um, shadow on the fur, but you also got shadow on the eye. And there I just dr um, drew a bit of light and um, light blues in the shadow to show that it is still part of the eye. I know the quality isn't the best. Um, the colors look a bit different in real life and the uh, sun is changing a lot so my camera has to adjust a lot so we got a lot of color changes but yeah this is the only equipment i got so far it's filmed with my iphone se which is which ha doesn't have a good camera i hope to be able to buy some better equipment in the future but yeah we'll have to deal with this so yeah <laughs> it's so blurry I'm sorry to all the people who will watch this on full screen and see how blurry it is. Yeah, this is just for me to test out what I can do with my art and with my uh, filming and so yeah, I will get better in the future. We're almost to the end of this eye, I'm just adding the latest parts, making sure this pupil is black. As you can see, it's not completely right, but uh, the general forms are the same. And the colors as well. So, thank you so much guys for watching. I really hope you learned something from it. I... Yeah, it was difficult for me to film this video because... 
I'm not used to it and it's my first real video. I got a few others but these were from a long time ago. Uh, so I had to... Yeah, I'm not used to talking about what I do. So it was hard for me to explain what I did. But I really hope you enjoyed it, you learned something from it and if you would like me to do some more videos like this in the future, just let me know, um, like I said before, let me know what you would like to see, um, yeah, any specific things, any specific subjects for me to talk about. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed and see you next time, bye!